Blacksmith Her Radio, forging blacksmiths together. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Blacksmith Her Radio. It's Victoria, your host, and today is episode number 59. Today I've got Jerry Coe on the line from California, and Jerry and I, along with 21 other blacksmiths or so, and uh, and their friends and spouses are all headed to Buenos Aires, Argentina, at the end of February, February 28th. It's coming right up, right around the corner. And it is the Paris of Latin America. I can't wait to go. And I couldn't wait to interview Jerry all about our trip that's coming up and and his whole background of being a blacksmith and the background behind the Argentinian trip. But before we get to that, I want to thank today's sponsor, and that's the Artist Blacksmith Association of North America, a.k.a. Abana. All right, let's uh, dive right into this interview with Jerry. All right. Hi, Jerry. Thank you so much for carving out time to be on the show today. I know you have been super busy running your business, co-studios, lighting, architectural lighting, and um, and planning for our trip to Buenos Aires, Argentina. So thank you today for uh, being with us. Thank you, Victoria. I'm glad to uh, be able to give this interview. First, let's, um, let's start with a little bit about you and your background in blacksmithing. Well, for me, I was um, involved in Yosemite uh, National Park as a mountain climber as a young man. And oh, I- really? Yeah. Wow. I, I love that place, and uh, I was doing mountain rescue very early and became a park ranger when I was 20, doing mountain rescue. And I uh, used to hang out, it evolved that I hung out uh, in a museum in Wawona where they had a pioneer history center, and each cabin there, nine cabins, were occupied by people recreating um, different moments in Yosemite's history. And I uh, used to go down and look at this man who was restoring stagecoaches, and they built two from scratch in this uh, workshop in Wobona, behind the museum. And uh, I would just spend my whole lunch hour just leaning in the doorway, Hmm. and he invited me to be his apprentice. So I came back the following year, and I was the apprentice apprentice stagecoach builder. I, I just couldn't believe I was there in this magical space. In fact, when I first got the job and transferred to Wawona, I slept on the floor between two stagecoaches with all this harness and uh, um, harness and horse equipment hanging from the wall around me. And we learned to cut down the tree and season the wood. We shaped and uh, shrunk the tires on the wheels. We made uh, wheels for wagons in national parks all over the United States. And we built two wagons from scratch. Wow. And we did a lot of restoration. So very wow. fascinating beginning it for me. It is. Wow. I, I uh, had a journeyman's project. My two teachers, one was an old sea captain and master craftsman, and the other my stagecoach builder, who was also semi-retired at the time. And they both said, you know, I needed to get out of the stagecoach place and go somewhere in the world where I could do uh, the next step, a journeyman's project. So I found a job. I looked around the world, but I found a job in Hawaii, and I took an old iron hull from Germany, and I built a 130-foot square rig sailing ship, a whaling ship for a museum. And I had to put in new decks and build the cabins, and I built the masts, and I tied all the rigging and spliced it all myself. Wow. And I, I, uh, it took a while. I drew all the drawings for the project and did all the research on how um, two-masted square rig sailing ship would look, and that was my beginning. Now, I, I um, came back home, and I, an old friend from climbing had me apprentice to him as a Finnish carpenter, and we built houses, high-end homes all around the Central Valley, near Yosemite, down in the valley. And I um, got to know wood pretty well, and they uh, kept asking me, Jerry, you're a blacksmith too, why don't you forge some door handles for the house we're building? So on the side, besides the carpentry, I was doing a little blacksmithing. And pretty soon, I had enough. I opened a shop, and I did wood carving, uh, cabinet making, and uh, some still work as a finished carpenter. And I began blacksmithing full time. That was, uh, I don't know when was that, 1979. Wow. (laughs) So I've been blacksmithing uh, full time ever since. I've only, uh, and I take commissions. I work uh, 
nothing on spec. I've only been without a commission two weeks since then. Uh, the entire wow. time I've been booked That's solid nice. up to a year in advance uh, often. And, uh, well, I, uh, in the meantime, you do other things besides your normal profession. And I uh, picked up about 12 years ago the tango. I started taking some lessons in tango. And this will connect us to um, Buenos Aires a little. Okay. But I, um, I went down to Buenos Aires um, innocently. I, I had guided overseas before myself, and I thought it was maybe crazy going with a big group, 40 people, 45 people down to Buenos Aires. And I thought, well, if I don't like being with a big group, I'll just get lost and do my own thing. And I ended up wandering around the streets of Buenos Aires, just fascinated that it had as much ironwork or more on all the buildings uh, than Paris or London wow. or New York. I mean... Paris, we think of as this incredible place with iron doors and balconies, mm -hmm. but Buenos Aires has more stuff. You wouldn't believe how much stuff. And they, for 50 years, they were the one of the 10 richest countries in the world, and they had tons of money to do beautiful architecture with sculpted stonework, carved figures holding up balconies, fantastic stuff. When so was I, that? Um, were they from 1880 to 1930? Okay. And, in 1930, things went downhill for Buenos Aires because they elected, uh, well, they had a junta, which means a group takes over the government and throws out the president and the parliament. And they had a group come in uh, that was pro-labor. And they said, well, let's just get all these foreign investors out of our country and we'll just go to work and uh, be uh, good for the people. Well, the problem was is that uh, then with no money, all construction ceased. And they had, you know, great labor conditions, but no money. And they were poorly managed uh, from the top. Mm. Uh, Juan Perón and people like that uh, did a poor job of managing the economy, education, um, transportation systems inside the country. And from 1930 until now, there's been very little new construction. In fact, if you ask an architect about carpenters, they laugh and say there aren't any carpenters. Everything is done with tilt-ups and pre-hung doors and pre-hung windows, and you can't miss this treasure trove of architectural ornament at beautiful buildings all over the place, as far as you go. So I, you talk to a taxi driver, and he knows. He said, we don't have any money in this country, but we have a treasure. We want to save it. We want to preserve it. Architects, um, uh, craftsmen of what few you can find, know how valuable this place is. Everybody wants to save their neighborhood. And that summer, that was the summer 2014, uh, I was taking lessons at the Apple store nearby, the Apple computer store, for my laptop. And I evolved from photo editing up to making a simple video. And I decided um, with my teacher that I should try to make a video using these Argentine photos. So I built a, built a, a slideshow. I put uh, some tango music in the background. I added some uh, a voiceover talking about it. I put s subtitles in Spanish. I, I really got a good <laughs> lesson out of it with my teacher. So I, I took this... A video and I had it with me and I hadn't shown it really to too many people and Kirk McNeil from the California Blacksmiths Association said he'd love to see it so when he saw it he said Jerry this is this is grant material you should be going back to Buenos Aires and and follow up on what you're asking in your video who made this beautiful work it, uh, he was right I, I was surprised to hear he was the chairman of the grants committee and I suddenly, I suddenly had a grant, and I went back October uh, 2014, and I spent three weeks in Buenos Aires. I met 40 new friends. I, I met architects. I found one blacksmith, and he, even he thought he was the only blacksmith in the country. Nobody around. Really? Just nobody said there are welders fixing things, but there's no blacksmithing. Wow. And uh, so... Um, we talked about it. We held a big party at the end of my trip. Forty people, fifty people came. People sang <laughs> tangos, and we took up, a, filled up a restaurant, and had a great party, and decided to form an association for architectural preservation. So in the spring, I thought, with my own money, the best thing I could do was maybe bring this blacksmith who'd never met another live blacksmith like me. I'd bring him to California. 
and he could work in different shops around California for six, for three weeks. I brought the architect too for two weeks, and I made I set up interviews for him with all the preservation architects in San Francisco. Wow! And so I brought them both, and they did this. And at the end of it, we decided, um, oh, well, I should go back with a few friends and maybe teach some free classes. People might be interested. And I asked around at the uh, Blacksmith Spring Conference in California. Western That's states, it. yeah? Yes, and a uh, few people were interested. Well, by July, I thought, if I'm bringing a few people, I should contact the U.S. Embassy. Well, they decided that this was a perfect program that fits, their, fits the ambassador's plans for Argentina to have community involvement and education and all free. Right. So we have the United States Embassy, the ambassador to Argentina, supporting us. Wow. Giving us um, a little publicity support, and we hope for more. Mm -hmm. And so I put out the word. I decided, okay, I'll see if anyone else wants to come. And I soon had uh, 36 people. We could get everybody down there and pull off a tour of Buenos Aires every day. We'd walk around the streets of downtown Buenos Aires. And then over a three-day weekend, we're going to have uh, free demonstrations and blacksmithing lessons in a public park. Well, And then we'll go out in the countryside on um, the fall for a whole day and see gauchos and have a big barbecue and then a little time to ourselves and then return home. Well, I asked the mayor of our suburb. Buenos Aires has about 15 suburbs. And I asked the mayor of this suburb, and she thought this was the greatest thing. And she uh, actually changed the park I had picked out, and she offered us a public park in the middle of Buenos Aires to do our demonstrations. And they're going to give full support, electricity, sound, any kind of equipment we need. And um, we decided we would build um, a sculpture. We'll try and build a sculpture over these three days in the midst of our classes. And they picked a spot, and they're building a platform to put the sculpture permanently in the park. Nice. To, yeah, and the idea is to celebrate sharing craft. The uh, beginner station, th will that be even more open to, for the public to come in and, and try a few hits? Well, I hope so. Uh, my hope is that we have about uh, 20 full-time blacksmiths helping out in this project out of our group and then you know the other 17 people are a support group helping any way we can and then we have about 45 people now in a blacksmith club that started in uh, Buenos Aires the people who are welders and knife makers and it turned out a couple other blacksmiths popped up who just do very simple things and they were really open to these free lessons mm -hmm. so they'll be there so that gives us so now we're up to 80 people and then we have a hundred people who are fans of our project on Facebook who all hope to come and be supportive somehow. Then we have the community, and we don't know who's coming. Right. We're going to put it in the newspaper and say, come on down. And on Saturday night, uh, I'm trying to host a public dance in the middle of our stations. So the this combination of things. I want people just to feel like they can come up and uh, learn to use a hammer and anvil and poke around at the fire, get the fire going, heat the metal and shape it. Okay. Now, tell me this, talking about moving materials and materials in itself, where will the group be getting the materials? Well, there's, the, there's enough resources in Buenos Aires to get uh, basic uh, iron and steel, uh, basic shapes, uh, rounds and squares and flat strap bars and stuff. Are they going to be donated or are, who's buying it? Uh, I'm, uh, I, I think some of our money was set aside to help pay for materials so they wouldn't get strapped with the cost. Okay. So part of our uh, land cost covers some materials and the rental of uh, some tools like uh, torches, acetylene, oxygen tanks and torches and any other equipment we need. Uh, I'm not sure. Actually, I'm not sure if we're going to use coal or uh, some other form of carbon. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to have in our forges, but we'll find out. And um, so there's some mysteries. We're trying to make something happen there that hasn't happened in 85 years. 
So we are really pushing the envelope, and right. everyone there is uh, coming together to help us. They're trying to find enough anvils, enough forges, enough just basic things to get us moving. So it's going to be a challenge, uh, I think, but uh, I think creativity is going to be called on, and I think uh, most of the blacksmiths are preparing mentally to kind of take that on. It'll be kind of fun to uh, see how... Uh, Everyone interprets the materials we have, uh, the um, well, the people we have on hand, and what they're capable of doing. We'll see. Let's talk about some of the um, blacksmiths that are going. That's part that are part of the group. Oh, uh, sure. This um, Brett Moten from Reno, Nevada. He's a, a very capable blacksmith. Does uh, large scale sculpture and. Uh, does uh, gates and railings and everything for fine homes. John McClellan, he's president of the California Blacksmith Association, was and has a shop with eight blacksmiths working for him. Major place near Sacramento when they do work all over the United States. Mm -hmm. Heather McClarty, who she runs her own shop in uh, Los Angeles area, and she does a lot of repoussé, hollow forming, copper and bronze work and also runs a school in L.A. To, to teach blacksmithing. Our youngest blacksmith is Atticus Kiesling, and he's from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, another blacksmith is coming who I asked to join us. His name is Timofey uh, Silich, and he's from St. Petersburg, Russia. Uh, other people, John Weiner from uh, Tennessee. He is similar to Brett Moten. He does uh, sculpture, gates and railings and steer rails. And he's all around blacksmith working in uh, iron, trying to think of uh, others. Uh, Bobby Thomas from uh, South Carolina. They're, they're listed all on the website, and you have a website created just for this trip. What is That's it called? Right. It's, it's called restorationcraftsman.org. Restorationcraftsman.org. It has um, an itinerary uh, posted on it, and it has uh, sort of a page. Uh, it's like a blog, but I, it's, I think it's called Jerry's Page. And uh, you can see um, updates, uh, how we're traveling by air, uh, what's happening downtown, um, activities. Uh, we heard uh, the mayor toured the park and selected a place for us to work and where we might put a sculpture and... Uh, all the other elements that are coming together, our news, our news site. Okay, right. We also put a uh, Spanish-English dictionary on the website. I just uh, noticed that today. I haven't gone back to check. I check on the website every now and then, and I just noticed that. That's so perfect. I need to know what an anvil is in Spanish. Yunque. Yunque. And, yunque, and the, those will be all our blacksmithing vocabulary on that Hey, thanks, Jerry. I really appreciate your time. What a great, great interview and conversation. I'm so looking forward to seeing you at the end of February. Thank, Thank you, you. Much, Victoria, for uh, your interview. And uh, I hope this uh, inspires other blacksmiths to set out and check out Buenos Aires and meet some of the blacksmiths down there and see the beautiful ironwork that runs throughout the city. Become inspired like us. Come along with us. Right. See, right. You in, see you in Buenos Aires. Blacksmith Her Radio, forging blacksmiths together.